Hi everyone, so uh, time for another video. Um, just to be clear, this is part of a video series. So if you've not seen the previous five videos, then I will have the playlist uh, display up in the top right hand corner. I do recommend that because of the way that the videos are structured, that you do watch the videos in order. So everything is the same. Um, other than UK South has been uh, deleted and we have gone with a hub in France. Um, it was just a licensing um, thing that I wanted to get rid of. I was being charged quite a lot higher Azure because I'd gone with the, um, the Azure subscription based model on that and I hadn't brought my own license. So I've just um, canned that off and uh, gone with uh, a bring your own license deployment in France. Uh, all the policy packages, all the firewall policies, the objects and everything have been deleted. So it's, it's, it's a clean slate here. And what we're going to do in this video is that we're going to apply the, uh, or use the SD1 orchestrator to build an ADVPN mesh between all of the sites. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go down to device manager, provisioning templates, select feature visibility, and make sure that everything that we want is ticked. For some reason, BGP and SD1 overlay uh, and a few others aren't enabled by default. And we're going to be doing quite a lot of work with SD1 overlay in this video. So what we do now is we create, create new under SD1 overlay. Choose the topology that we want. We've got dual hub, we we'll primary and secondary here. Call this 40 bytes video, 40 bytes. Advanced, you can configure your loopback overlay and BGP AS number. I've predefined what I want here. So the loopbacks are gonna be in this quirky IP range. The overlay network is gonna be built on this quirky IP range. The BGP ASN is fine as it is, and we want to enable Auto Discovery VPN. Uh, for those of you that are new to this, Auto Discovery VPN is the ability for um, spoke to spoke communication to take place. So if we look at what we're building here, we're building IP set VPN tunnels from each spoke to the each hub. Um, but, and initially, let's say that one spoke wants to speak to another spoke, then the traffic would go up to the hub and then down to the spoke. But after a, a, a few packets or so, um, using internet key exchange um, and ADVPN, the two spokes will negotiate a dynamic IP set VPN tunnel between them um, for a, a, a certain period of time and the traffic will no longer go via the hub. So that's what we're enabling here. So we need to make a selection on what the hubs are. So the primary hub is going to be UK West and the secondary is going to be France. And the spoke group or the branch group is going to be known as spoke and we're going to automatically assign the branch id using variables so the next part that we need to go over is the uh, underlay configuration for both the hubs and the branches or the spokes so in this example so far there's only one underlay network and that is on port one on each of the devices. So let's get that configured. It's not a private link. Uh, a private link is um, where you have an MPLS network or a VPLS network where you don't want to build an overlay on top of it. Um, actually, to be honest with you, we should override the IP here because um, as this is a Microsoft Azure deployment, it, it's going to pick the LAN IP addresses or the internal addresses from port one. Um, they're internal in, a, in Azure. It won't understand what the public IP address is, but we're going to leave this for now and we'll go back into template and configure that um, another day. We're going to leave the route maps for now. Um, 
we'll just have a quick glance over the advanced config. We don't want any route maps or anything like that. Nope. So we're going to leave that for now. Go over to net. We want to add the overlay objects to SD1 template. We're going to have to create the SD1 template. Mm. Going to leave, try and get away with just leaving this as, de as, as, as default if I can. Add overlay in spaces and zones, yes. Add health check servers for each hub. Add performance SLA, yeah. Normalize interfaces. Add health check firewall policy to hub policy package, yeah. Okay. Hub and spoke. Hub and spoke, yeah. So this is now going to go off and create lots of different templates. So if we look at from left to right, template groups, you can see that it's created a template group for hub one and hub two and the branch. It's created IPsec tunnel, VPN tunnels, created an SD1. Template, it's created a BGP. Uh, template, we did SD1 OD, o, overlay, it's created, and that is not created anything else, I don't think. It, oh yeah, it does do CLI template as well. So it's got some CLI templates here. Okay, so that template has been configured. So what we're going to try and do now is push the policy package out to the hubs. You see that the provisioning template is there for a uh, hub. It's been installed successfully, so let's have a look on the hub. See what we can find. So for the the ability for the overlay network to speak to the loopback interface, that looks right to me. IP set VPN server should be there. On port one looks fine with nothing in phase two other than default. You want firewall policy to be able to control it. Have a look in the second gate, should be the same. Um, so firewall policy should be the same. Yeah. The um, IPsec should be the same. Look at BGP, show router BGP. There's BGP in there, that's fine. Okay. So now we need to do exactly the same as what we've just done previously, but to the spokes. Look at so it's installed, it's creating a loopback interface, it's adding the IP set, IP set VPN configuration. Looks like the gateway is correct. Uh, I did manually set the gateway by the way, um, because it won't understand the internal IP address that um, Azure uses. That's fine. Okay, so that's gone on 
Okay, on to Sweden. And Germany. So if we have a look on the hub under VPN IP set tunnel, you can see that there's two dial-up connections, uh, which is both of the spokes. Again, for France, which is another hub, you can see two dial-up connections and the VPN for the spoke, Sweden, has got a v an IP set VPN up and established to um, each of the hubs, so um, UK and France, and Germany should have the same. So again, Germany has an IP set VPN to each of the hubs. Okay, so there was some uh, minor changes that were made to um, make this template fit with uh, a Microsoft Azure deployment. Uh, the issues stem from, um, in my environment, there not being a, a LAN interface um, to redistribute. So what I've done is I've just created loopbacks on all of the devices. So if I just demonstrate that very quickly, um, so if I go to device manager, device and groups, go into France, go into network interfaces, you will see that I've created uh, an interface called loopback zero. It's the same, same in Germany, but different IP address, same in Sweden, I think you get the point, and same in the UK. I did also make some configuration changes to BGP um, across the board. So if I go to provisioning templates, BGP, branch BGP, edit, um, I redistributed connected into BGP. Uh, I will tidy this up at some point, so I'm not redistributing everything into BGP, but it, it's fine for the moment. Uh, I did the same on both hubs as well. I'll just show you one of them. Um, I redistributed connected into BGP again. Okay, so the next phase of it is to check um, BGP uh, or the routing table, the rib um, on the spoke devices. So if you see, I tidied this up with a little bit of a command here, but get router info routing table or grep 172. These are the loopbacks that are assigned on each device in the bottom right-hand corner. So you can see that Sweden knows about Germany. It also knows about UK West, and it also knows about France. Should probably have run this command first, but you can see that the BGP neighborship between the spoke and both hubs um is up at the moment again it's learning 13 prefixes at the minute because i've redistributed everything um into bgp i will be tidying that up and only redistributing what i need to see uh same with germany uh you'll see that the there's two um bgp sessions up to each of the hubs so there are some uh, firewall policies that have been added into the hub and spoke policy package. Just thought I'd go over that quickly. So uh, VPN1 to VPN1 um, on the hub is uh, permit spoke to spoke communication. Uh, VPN1 to the loopback interface allows um, incoming uh, connections to be able to ping the loopback and the reverse of that uh, here. And then on the spoke policy package, um, the ability for each of the hubs to speak to loopback zero and loop and the reverse logic of that. So loopback zero to be able to speak out to both hubs. Okay, so for the grand finale, a couple of ping tests here. Uh, I will display um, the loopback addresses in the bottom right. So Sweden is now going to ping Germany. So 172.4.4.4 is Germany. And as you can see, Sweden can successfully ping Germany. And Germany is going to ping Sweden. So again, bring that up there. Sweden is on 172.3.3.3, 172.3.3. And as you can see, Germany can successfully ping the loopback IP address of um, Sweden. So Sweden is now going to be able to ping the UK. That's great. And Germany is going to be able to ping the other hub in France, ping, just to demonstrate the full 
connectivity that we now have. There we are, lovely. And that brings this video to a close. So just demonstrated how to build uh, a fairly large ADVPN architecture using 40 Manager as the orchestrator. Uh, we demonstrated connectivity between uh, lots of different countries um, in Europe. Um, so the, imagine being it having been able to do that when so you it's likely that you have two hubs. Uh, don't do single hub deployment. We'll, we'll do some testing in in future videos around why that might be. Um, but imagine having the ability to just bring on other sites now at will and they being able to automatically speak to each other, uh, basically on provisioning. Um, it's also very secure. So it's a firewall at the end of the day. So you can be very, very granular with what can speak to what. We'll probably look at that again in future videos. Um, and as always, trying to hit a thousand subscribers by 2024. So, uh, hit that subscribe button, um, hit the like button, and let me know in the comments if you have any feedback or what you would like to see in future videos. We shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye now.